Uh, thank you very much, and uh, it's still the morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, um, as uh, Trevor was doing his uh, opening uh, and salutations, and I tried to, and I made a note. Uh, who do I need to acknowledge? Uh, but then we're running out of time, and I, there's a clock ticking at the back. I'm going to say uh, all of the important people, including Deputy Minister, um, including the Chair of the President of Salga, everyone, uh, SACN CEO, SACN Chair, all of the important dignitaries. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge you. And uh, my name is Pam Yago, as already said. I am a um, practitioner, I think. Um, not sure about expert, but uh, I think I've been around, I've seen things, and <laughs> I, kn I probably have views on things, and uh, my views sometimes are the, a bit on the maverick side, sometimes they're much more moderate. Um, and uh, the expectation is that I facilitate a, a robust discussion. So uh, robust uh, is, um, is, that's my um, output. I need to do, so I need to, so in terms of my performance agreement, I need to facilitate a robust discussion. So uh, one of the things as I was speaking to the panelists, I know they've given their titles um, and their roles that they are currently playing is that I said to them uh, yesterday when I was talking to them that uh, uh, you need to, so let's just be open. Let's call it what it is in this discussion. In so far as that uh, we put a disclaimer in the discussion to say the views expressed are they personal views, are not they not necessarily the views of the institutions, or organizations that they come from. I think that will help with, uh, with uh, robust uh, we've had um, introduction and presentation, and I think the master class has made my job easier uh, in terms of introducing uh, this, the, the topic that we're dealing with in terms of well-governed uh, cities and issues of governance are issue, is what we're going to be dealing with with the panel. Uh, we've had a, uh, we know a couple of things. Again, the master class would have dealt with that. That is actually what, how, what systems and processes that we may put in place so that the right decisions are made and those decisions impact on citizens. All right? So it's about the, the, the decisions that are made and how those impact on citizens. So how does the structure, how do we organize ourselves in a manner that, that ensures that those decisions uh, contribute to uh, sustainable development and, and towards the vision that we have to, um, uh, for the city. We've heard about collaboration and partnerships with citizens at the core of that, and also in, the, in, the, in, in terms of the way service are delivered. Uh, services are delivered to, um, and I think gone are the days, and you could disagree with me, where we think that government and local government in this instance will be the sole uh, um, um, provider of services. So partnerships have to come in, public-private, community part partnerships with communities, but also citizen engagements in the process. So those are some of the things that I would like us to talk about. But we are meeting in a context. And the context was also in the presentation here. Some cities, we're not sure who's a mayor. The other mayor is coming in, another one is coming out. Others, uh, there's an acting city manager and a new city manager is being appointed. And, um, and we know the debt levels in cities is going, is rising. We've just come out of a pandemic, if we are out of it. Um, uh, people are just cannot afford to, to pay. And the, the economy is not doing so well. And, um, and also just there is just a general uh, apathy, I should say. And, and um, Trevor spoke about trust deficit. So everyone is looking for something that will change the situation. And, um, and we've done the laws, we've got the laws. So please, let's not talk about the laws because we've got that. We've got the policies. But um, so bringing my panel into the discussion is why can we not get it right? What needs to be done? Let's start with, uh, uh, so you can tell me who wants to go first, yeah. but what is the challenge? Let's get it from your perspective. 
you are involved on a day-to-day -day basis. It's easy for us to throw stones and say this and this must happen and point fingers at yourselves. But what, what's happening? What's the challenge? Uh, thank you, uh, Pam, um, and, and a very good morning to my panelists, and a very good morning to, uh, to, to uh, our uh, audience. My name is Johan Mettler, um, uh, and I manage cities. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> um, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it happened, but uh, since Msunduzi, I, I, I find myself always in something that's called the thick of things. So, what's the issue? All around, Msunduzi, Nelson Mandela Bay, um, Lekwa, where I was m most recently, uh, in, 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 in Chwane. The issue that I think is probably the most pressing is leadership, or the lack thereof. It is in the absence, it is in the absence of leadership that there is this vacuum. Um, and I experienced it, as I've indicated to you, in, in, especially in, in Nelson Mandela Bay. And when there's an absence of leadership, that vacuum will be filled. And it will be filled by, uh, by, by, by interests. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm very clear, I'm not saying people, it's interests that will fill that vacuum because that's the law of nature. Vacuums cannot exist, they must be filled. And it is the, the filling of that with interests, nefarious interests, interests that do not put the community first, that do not put the objects of local government that, that Trevor was speaking about first, that does not put the, um, uh, 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 our, the integrity that is needed in order to engage with the public purse first. And it is that lack of leadership which I think is probably the biggest problem. Uh, and I'm saying that both at, the, both at the political level, but more especially at my level. So I will leave the, the politicians to decide whether there is or, 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 or not. But certainly at, at the executive level, I have found where those that are, that, that are leading, supposed to lead, step back. They step back and they say, um, I am not accountable for this. They step back and say at, at all levels, I am not responsible for this. And it is then that lack of being accountable, of being, uh, uh, not being held responsible by those who oversee you that, that, that causes the biggest problem, and that is often the vacuum that, that, that I find in my experience that I have to fill. So now you must lead where there were other leading interests. And uh, my last point, Pam, um, the, and, the, and the difficulty with leading in, a, in an environment like that is that you dislodge through your leadership an economy. And very often an illicit economy, an economy of, 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 of power, an economy of economic interest that you have to dislodge in order to lead. Otherwise, you too must step back. And I think that is the issue. Man. Thanks. Um, I'm going to come to Spongle now to just come back on the issue of the executive <coughs> side. But I just want to come to Councillor here. Uh, Johan spoke about what is the issue of leadership. And he said you're speaking just on the administrative or executive side. What's, what is the challenge from a leadership perspective uh, at a political level? Is there a challenge? Or is it just the administrators that's the problem? <laughs> no, thank you very much. Uh, I'll join you in uh, standing on protocols observed so that I'll get uh, mm -hmm. straight into uh, re responding to you. Uh, I, I think I want to agree with uh, Johan on the issue of leadership. Um, on both ends, on the political side and the administrative side, because those sides need to work together. Especially where there's a failure to balance the contending interests in, in, in that particular space. Because 
whether it's, it's the interest of the youth, it's the interest of business, whichever interest, failure to moderate and, and, and regulate those interests will then lead into the failures that uh, we see in some of the places. Uh, an example in our, in our municipality, uh, I'm from Eteguin. We, I was laughing at Johan earlier that uh, the last time I saw him, he was uh, uh, complaining about coalitions in, in uh, Nelson Mandela Bay. Um, and we were laughing because we did not have that phenomenon. Now, <laughs> Eteguin... <laughs> Now, Eteguin is uh, ran by a coalition. And um, when, when um, Prof was speaking here, it was as if he was speaking directly about Eteguin because most of what he said, uh, I could relate to. But besides the, on the political end, Eteguin, for instance, has 60% of its, of its jurisdiction under what is called rural areas. And those rural areas in our specific situation are under... 16 Amakos. Now, and, and they are not just resident there. They own land through the Ngonyama transport. And therefore, when we want to take decisions about development uh, in any area of, 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 of under that jurisdiction, you then need to form partnerships, you then need to negotiate, and your negotiations will need a certain type of leadership. Now, what Prof was talking about here was a situation where Sometimes there's a high turnover of leadership. Now, leadership is a relationship issue. Um, you form, um, most partnerships are created at a relationship level. That is why people were complaining when we were having meetings during um, COVID and virtually, saying that you, can't, you cannot really feel the connection through a virtual platform. You need to sit around and, you know. So if we have created if a leadership has created a relationship with a particular Ngozi or a group of Amakosi about a particular development, and then is out of leadership, and then a new leader comes in, he will not just seamlessly run through with that project. Then it goes back, you start afresh. And now there's, that's an interest of traditional leaders and the people that still believe in traditional leadership, rightly so. Um, as I'm speaking, over the weekend, we are having a um, coronation event in the city where the king um, of Amazulu is going to be handed over the certificate by the president. So the city is seized with that. Now, I'm highlighting that because it tells you how key um, the traditional leadership is in the governance of the city. Now, we used to have a situation where <clears throat> all of them would sit in council with us as observers regulated by your COCTA regulations. And um, some change in regulations saw so all of them having to leave and only be represented by three. Now you had a situation where you could sit and talk to all of them at the same time, they could see projects at their inception and all, conception and all of that, their part, they feel part. Now they are represented. So it makes our job very difficult. Now that's a policy issue uh, that when uh, we were dealing with it, we are on the receiving end as, the, as a city. It might not be a situation uh, and elsewhere. Also, in KZN, uh, Johan, uh, as a former resident, mm -hmm. we are the only uh, um, province where we don't have executive mayoral system. Now, the situation is different there because it means because it means the executive committee is a multi-party committee. I thought I'd exceeded. The executive committee, when well, we're the only metro in the province, uh, our executive committee is comprised, even long before the coalition, uh, is comprised of multi-parties. You earn your seat at the executive committee on the basis of the number of votes that you amassed. So we've always been, in a way, different from what the other municipalities are. Municipalities. Now, that, that, that is a bit different in terms of how you negotiate, how you... And um, in our own situation, I don't know how, our executive committee meetings are open. Uh, they are like public meetings. There's media in those meetings. Meaning that when we take decisions in the executive, immediately the community and your, your council knows about them before you go to your caucuses and canvass those decisions. And therefore leadership and negotiation 
takes a, a little bit of a different uh, mm. posture in our specific situation. Thank you. Thank you, Spongile. You sit in a program that supports cities. Uh, do you agree with the, with the um, um, definition of the challenge? Well, from where you're sitting, what do you think is the challenge? Thank you, Pam. Uh, good morning, uh, colleagues, and all protocol observed. Can I be provocative? I would love that. Urban spaces are serious business. Some of them are actually bigger than companies registered in the stock exchange. They are not a play game. Urban spaces are actually the center, the core center of development of our countries, of our country. And if the urban centers don't work, the country doesn't work. That's for me the biggest problem is the juniorization of the urban spaces. The, the placement of leaders in the urban spaces that their own political parties don't even f respect them. Mm. Thus, if, if we were to be controversial, that for me is the problem. If you place in an urban space where you actually run an economy, like the, the city of Johannesburg, the, the Tswane, they all manage above 50 billion rands a year. Some of them, their, their budgets are bigger than provinces. But when political parties, and this is the point that Prof. Fowler made, when political parties are to deploy leaders in local government, they look at their most junior and they are most feeble. The second issue for me is about how the urban centers have been made a source of, I wanted to say corruption, but a source of extraction. Mm. And this is not even about one political party, it's about all political parties across the space. Thus, the extraction of the value and investment in local government for political benefit and sp specific personal interests is what put us here. Mm. Local government, and in particular the metros, are actually a scramble field for resources. Mm. And, it's, and, and I'm not going to say which political party, all political parties across the spectrum have the same problem. Thus, when you put a leader there, it's what is in it for me that makes these centers don't work. Thus, for me, if we move back from the role of what the SACN was all about, and happy birthday, SACN, 20 <laughs> years, you are a very, very, <laughs> a, you are a meaningful youth now. <laughs> what the role of the SACN is, is about putting and bringing the urban center in the table of discussion and engagement. Mm. The SACN is what I call the, 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 the kitchen cabinet of, local, of, of urban centers. Now, it is in my view that that space of the urban centers in the decision-making table must never be negotiable and must actually be demanded because we matter. We make the difference. And when you demand it, you're not only demanding it from departments, you demand it even in cabinet, you demand it in parliament, you demand it because you actually matter. That's for me, I hear my colleagues saying it's leadership, but it is the type and the, the change leadership that we need in the urban spaces and also both in the administrative or in the technical and the mm. political. You need change agents here. You need mm. activists. You need people that are respected by their societies to say, we actually demand this. Mm. It's, it's, it, it, we cannot go hand in, cap in hand. No. This is a space we need to make happen. We matter. That's, and, and for me, it's also about the social capital. The social capital in these metros is huge. I mean, John, how many businesses you have? I mean, I mean, I mean parliament and, and the cabinet is in your, in your territory. Why don't they regard you as a very big partner? And, and for me, it's that social capital and, and I always say in my engagements that there was a time in our country where the urban leadership mattered. Mm. 
They mattered because they, they brought with them the social capital into government. Thus, there is no time for us to treat the leadership of these urban centers as the by the way. They matter, they hold social capital, and for the country to move on and move forward, that social capital must be brought into the decision-making forum. Thus, I, I am I'm not op apologetic. I think the leaders, both technical and, and political, in the urban spaces must make themselves a force to be reckoned with. Okay. So, so, uh, so it's about, uh, I think there's consensus that leadership is our biggest challenge here. And Spongel has taken the discussion further and said uh, that we need change-capable leaders, all right? But on top of it, they, they need to have agency, both as individuals and being part of a collective. All right. So we're not talking about the laws now and the systems that need to be put in place. Although councillor did mention this, this notion of Amakosi in KZN, which might be something peculiar uh, in terms of the system there, um, and maybe in other parts of the, of the country as well, but in most cities not. But that's a dimension, and I'm, I want to pack that. Uh, if we've got time, we can come back to it. But I want to come back to this. Uh, okay. We... Um, as, as citizens or as residents, uh, technically we do choose who the leader of the, of the, of who the mayor is. Um, but we don't exercise our right because this thing is in, involved and it's still a political system that uh, uh, the candidates that are, that are put forward are the candidates that uh, a political party, whether they're junior or whatever happens, uh, those are political. That's, so to what extent is the issue of the, of the political system that we have, I know there's a debate on this in, at a national level, whether we are going to have a president that's elected by, 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 the, by, by us. And, um, but how practical is that at a city level? And I would like to, if Johan would start again, um, just on the, what is possible from a, a, a system point of view and changing the kind of leader. But I want to come back to Smongila on the behavior side. Uh, what, what, I mean, how should these leaders behave? And how could we make sure from a city support program that, the, that we, the leaders are then helped with the agency? And I, and I think from a... a um, a political perspective is the responsiveness, is the citizens, and I would like to come back to you on that issue. So, Johan, okay. it's a it's a it's a simple question, but uh, but but it's complex. Um, as we would say, uh, well, as a dad, I would say, uh, my daughter, it's it's complicated. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it is. the The complexity is exactly as has been uh, illustrated. By, 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 by our, by our councillor. And, and that is that, irrespective of the system, and uh, I've been on record as, 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 as saying that as far as coalitions are concerned, I think that they should be avoided at, at all costs. And I'm speaking as an administrator now, not as a political scientist or anything. I'm just a lawyer, by, by the way. So, uh, and the... the, the, the and the, the system that is, that is uh, uh, for example, in the KZN is that of an uh, exco. In other words, where your political executive is uh, made up of, on, a on a proportional basis. So you basically have the two top uh, 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 parties forming the political executive. And then, depending on the numbers, there may be one or two other smaller parties. That is, that is the case. And my common sense told me, you know, actually, if you can get that, if you can get 85% of the electorate to be represented, surely that must work. But not always. But not always. Why is that? Well, look at Itikwini. They've got the exco. And suddenly you find that because of the splintering of the, of the political interests, you no longer have two dominant parties. There may be a third one in the mix, and there may be a little fourth one that can, that can also say, well, you know, I must be part of that system, and if you want to accommodate me and not upset the apple cart, 
um, I think you're going to have to do X, Y, and Z in that particular area. And it's always about the areas. So it can be. So what is the answer? Well, what could be a, a, a possible approach? Maybe not the answer. That's, that's too presumptuous. That is that the, the quality of political leaders that, that are required to, 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 to advance the, uh, uh, the needs, uh, the aspirations of their communities are different to the ones that we used to in the past, where you had a big majority and you could lay down the law. Our political leaders need to accept that I, I cannot have it all. I would need to facilitate the participation of X, uh, A, B, and C as well. I have to be able to step back and tell my caucus, actually, that is not possible within our environment. There's a little bit more give than take. And I think it is that kind of political maturity which now does not uh, de determine the system. The system is the system. But it's the political maturity that will say what works for us as a party in that particular area. That may not work here. Mm. That may not work here. And then make a decision based on that. So, it's, yes, okay. <laughs> yes. Luckily, you're not in Chowane. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I just, I'll, I'll try and project my voice. I, I'm not sure whether that will work. I'm happy that the, the, the timer is off. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I will stop there. I will stop there. I was, I was, I was in there. trouble with the timer. Now that it's off, <laughs> it's, it's uh, free season. We can carry on until, <laughs> until she stops us. Okay. No, Political but I, maturity. I'll stop there. I'll, yeah. I'll Political stop there. maturity. That's, the point. That's where you ended. And I want to link with us. Uh, this as you answer your, your question. If you can also bring in the element of the constituency, because uh, councillors or city officials are not there to serve themselves. This system mm -hmm. was supposed to be about the communities. Why can't we do that? Okay. You heard me? I'm done. Oh, okay. okay. Can you repeat? Sorry, I was trying to be a gentleman. And you were trying to be a gentleman. <laughs> Political maturity, Yes, that's, what, that's one of the things that he added. And for me, it, I, I get that. But I'm also saying that, and, 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 um, and in that, and I think uh, compare that with political expediency, which could be a, a, an issue in itself. But I want to bring in the voice of the citizens here. At what point are we going to make sure that the voice of the citizens is listened to, uh, in addition to balancing the interest of the various parties or, 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 or political principles that we have in these municipalities or cities. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Um, I, I think in our specific situation, we, we have currently more than 70% of the councillors that are there are new. Um, it's people who have ne ne never had any experience in local government um, and it's an outcome of our, our own political system which is democratic in nature. Um, there were guidelines which said uh, we need to return at least a certain percentage for continuity and experience and all of that but the, at, at the end the system was democratized to a point where it brought in some of the people who are not even prominent leaders in, in, in their communities, a, a popular person, because he just saw if um, some of the audience is not uh, familiar with the, that, those guidelines. The guidelines said you'll go to a political meeting, elect from amongst yourselves, select three candy, capable candidates. They'll go through the interviews, they'll submit CVs and all of that just to ensure that they, they've gone through the process and they are the they meet the requirements. But then after that, you must take those three and present them to a community. So you call the community of the ward um, and you present those three. But then the guidelines said, you then can allow the community, if they so feel, to choose from amongst ourselves. 
not the three people that you've interviewed and taken through the hurdles from amongst the, themselves. They can choose one. And the outcome is that most of the people that we have in council right now are the product of that democratic process. Hmm. And therefore, we have like 70% of the people that needs to be taken through what the South African Cities Network has been taking through the previous councils, what Salka has been taking through, what all the other partners have been taking us through in terms of the councillor growth and all of that. Now you must then start afresh as if you are in year 2000 or year 1996 of those uh, temporal councils. Mm -hmm. That is one of the issues that we are grappling with. I don't know if that is the case elsewhere, but it's a case in our situation and it will show in how we then engage with issues in terms of the maturity that is needed in leadership, uh, the ability to discern uh, issues that needs um, a little bit of noise and issues that needs negotiations. Mm. Where the constituency is concerned, I would say, I would say um, yes, or yes and no. Our, our communities are not organized as constituencies per se in the, in the correct sense of a constituency. And therefore, you'll find that um, someone was complaining during the recent floods, the disaster that we had in the city, that it seems as if when you complain in English, your complaint is taken and responded to faster. Now, that speaks to the the demographics of the city and the history of where we are coming. We are a post-colonial city. We are made up of uh, the majority of the people who are living outside the city centers because of your apartheid spatial planning. You have the um, largest uh, community of Indians outside of um, the Indian continent. And the languages and the connections and the agency then becomes a uh, can you be able to complain? There are people who don't have telephones, who don't have access. Mm. How do those people, are they a constituent? Um, they have Inko OC in their, in their Imbumbulu constituency. Uh, they go to Induna first and then go to Inko OC. Only then they are told that no, go to a municipal council to go and complain. And it's three days later after they, they don't have water because of the system that we have. And even when they do finally find us, we are most likely to prioritize those who complain in English because they have agents. It's soon you'll see them uh, making videos, standing next to a leaking train, uh, mm -hmm. making videos and standing next to a leaking tra a train pipe that is leaking to the, to the river. And uh, that will trend. But if it's some old woman from Mbumbu who's complaining that they have no water and therefore this, that, and that, uh, will only focus on the broken English and all of that. And eventually... Uh, she doesn't have agents. Mm -hmm. So how do we then um, navigate that situation of a post-colonial city where some citizens, because of their previous location, enjoy and have agency, and they can use that agency as power to force government to mm -hmm. deliver services to them. On the other hand, there are people who do not have access yet, and they cannot demand access because um, the municipality is focused on those and um, recently in our in our own space we had um, rate payers associations threatening the city that they are going to withdraw rates because they have not received what is due to them now the people of um, Mtumezulu in Bumbulu uh, do not pay rates because they live in mud houses and all of that and therefore they cannot threaten us with anything mm. so is their agents yeah thank you Thank you. Spongila, I, I know I had spoken, I would ask you to think about the, the, the kind of behaviors that we need to have mm. from the leadership. If you want to comment on the issue of um, communities as well, and how can, they, how can you increase community agency so that their voice is louder, mm. whilst uh, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to take one hand on this side and one hand on this side. I'm, you'll come after Spongila if you need to say something. And then, uh, then I'll come back to the panel on practically what can be done, and we close. Okay? Mm. So you've got Spongi, we've got to get Spongile, we're going to go to the audience, one side, this side, and that side, and then we'll come back on your closing remarks with, if I can get one action that can be done, okay? Okay. practically. Yeah, I, I spoke about uh, who 
is made leaders in 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 these uh, urban spaces or in these metros or in this uh, in these uh, municipalities but i also want to say uh, uh, pam that you really need a community grounded leader you know <laughs> you can't see people the day you go to an election you know i in the audience i see a former councillor who actually would walk the streets of Johannesburg. That's, that's, I am actually asking myself, what happened to those politically and community grounded leaders mm. in communities? Because you, you can't see them only when you come to an election. You know, now what used to happen in the past uh, in local government is being done by the president. The president is doing imbizos. Councillors and mayors are no more doing imbizos in their communities. They're actually so remote that when they, they, the last time they see their communities, it was when they went for a campaign accompanied by the president and some ministers. They, they cannot relate. Now, the second issue that I think of the behavior of a, 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 a local government or a, a metro leader is the ability to actually take the whole of society with them. The, the whole of society, including the private sector and the community they serve. And that must actually ca come with that cloud that that person carries. I mean, if you, if you walk in the street, you shouldn't be like, spoiling in the past. You know, if you walk in the street, they should say, the mayor of Johannesburg was here. Mm. And, and there's a difference, you know, a Spongile and the mayor of Johannesburg or the mayor of Twan. That person must actually make a difference when he passes through a community because he is the mayor. And that for me is a status that these can only be earned when you live an exemplary life, a leadership life, a, dis a, a decision maker. I mean, you can't be a mayor and you don't have what you refer to as a strategic plan that actually says this is what this man stands for. Mm -hmm. And when he leaves after five years, he would have done A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. Masondo said, I'll tie the, the street of Johannesburg, of Soweto. When he left, each street of Johannesburg was tied. And he said, in, his, in my term of office, Johannesburg would be my priority. And even the World Cup was actually hosted in Soweto. And he didn't mix his words. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm saying... If you don't know what you are all about, you can't be a leader. If no one can relate on your agenda of that term of office, why are we calling you a leader? Yeah. Now, I think for me, the behavior of that leader is about making yourself and what you stand for known and everyone right. Whether, whether people would start not agreeing with what you stand for, but ultimately they would have to buy in to your vision, because this is the vision, and you must live it with, with, with all the enthusiasm and the passion, because mm. this is what you stand for. Mm. And it must stand scrutiny, because you can't come and say, I would actually give every child a, 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 a kimbi, and, and the kimbis <laughs> go to your, children, your, your, mm. your, your family, and they don't go to every child in the community. That's, that kimbi, every child in Johannesburg must have a kimbi. And that kimbi must be distributed with no favor, with no, and thus you must stand scrutiny. Yeah. That's when Masondo said, I'll tie the roads in Soweto. He tied each road block by block, not preferring where the deputy mayor stays, where uh, the leader of the ANC stays, where, where the president's uh, family is. He tied block by block and sequentially. Yeah. And that's transparency and accountability for me. Yeah. So I hear, so I hear visionary. I hear servant leadership. I hear ethical leadership as well. So I had a, I had a hand here, um, and this side they don't want to take come me up. Oh, they, I've got a hand here. That's it. Long, you're not on the panel, so you're very brief. And um, <laughs> you can see my panel has got a lot to say. So to keep them. Um, uh, they're coming back with their closing remarks, and I want to t t practical what can be done. Okay, I've got a hand. Um, Mike, Mike, Mike. I was told there was roving Mike. There's a there's a person here. And please, I, I don't want to lose my job. Uh, time. There's oh, another. Yeah. yeah. My name is Joe Kumete. I am the ombudsman for the city of Johannesburg. I wanted. Just to say that some time ago, Tulima Tonsela, <clears throat> because this is where she would come in, or an office of the power protector would come in, um, she had an example of a Gogo.
Logo, sorry. So let's call it that. You spoke about um, that old lady who doesn't have the same level of agency as um, somebody from Phoenix or, or Mtla. Um, so she had difficulty um, because people came to see her and she wanted certain things done at local government level. And they were not happening as quickly or as effectively as she wanted them to, or the people wanted them to, um, to happen. And she suggested that perhaps um, somebody like her, an office like hers, should be um, part of local government. And that's partly how, I was saying it's the only way, it's partly how the office of the Ombudsman in the city of Johannesburg was established. Have you given um, some thought to something like that um, in your metro, at Teguini, and maybe in other metros um, that can afford to have an office of the Ombudsman? And maybe even at a district level, um, you may not have um, enough resources to have an Ombudsman in, in every municipal uh, office, but maybe you can have them in the district, maybe you can have it in metro. Have you thought about that? Thank you. Okay, you're next. <clears throat> hey, good morning. I'm Tulim Pambugeli from the University of Johannesburg, and my, I'm an associate professor at the Urban and Regional Planning Department. As I'm sitting and listening, I'm like, um, I hear the leaders, I hear your views, and I respect them. However, you can, be, you can have a vision. Um, you can be so disciplined and not corrupt and be all that is good. But the system that you are using, how can you use, how can you use the very same system that created the problems that you are trying to solve, to solve them? How is that possible? Mm. All right. There, was a, there were two questions, um, so I don't know who wants to go. I'm, hip, I'm open in terms of your closing, who goes first? Spongile is burning to go. Mm. I, I like the, the ombudsman suggestion. But by the way, um, the issues of the ombudsman and the issues of the public protector, for me, the public protector has been accessible uh, to national government than to local government. And citizens have not woken up to say their issues of challenges with water and sanitation are issues that they should take to the public protector. Thus, I like the idea of a, of a city ombudsman. And, and I think for me, every councillor in a ward must be an ombudsman for that ward. But then the office of the ombudsman must also take that voice at a higher level and make it matter and make it count. Um, you, you know, I, the issue around the system of local government that has made us to be here, it's a question that we might actually live with for a long time. I have a different view. I think the system of local government, if it meant to work, it can work. And the system of local government has worked in this country. Mm. But we actually also have manipulated the system for our own favor. For me, the legislative and the policy framework of local government, and I agreed with you, Pam, when you said, let's not even touch that. It's so perfect, but anyone can actually neglect it and do what they want and they get away with it. Because I, I really think that if a mayor would actually every year pass a budget, and that budget is not spent, and that budget is not making any difference, and he stays in office for five years. In fact, a mayor can stay in office for one year and he can go back and say, I did this for this community. I challenge some mayors that have been in office for more than five years. They cannot even point at one thing they did for their communities. And, and this is what local government is all about. Local government is not about running SARS. Local government is about actually delivering basic needs that are prescribed by the constitution. Thus, for me, we can't hide, we cannot continue hiding against the system. 
We need to make the system work for us and make this and sweat the system and make it deliver for our communities. Yeah. Thank you. The pendulum directly go for a comment. The the our city do does have um, the ombudsman. It, it has always had um, for a very longest time. It's now called the uh, CIIU City, Inst City Integrity and Investigative Unit. Um, and it, 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 it works very well. It does not, it reports directly to council, to the city manager and to council, and therefore it, it works independently and it does, it, it does its work. Um, we so we, we, do, we do have that and they, they they hire some of the best investigators some are former your your former hawks and your former scorpions are some of the investigators in that unit so they, they, they we do have and it, it and it works um, but I, I do agree with my colleague here that uh, maybe not every problem uh, that exists in local government can be solved through the ombudsman but um, there are issues that uh, needs the ombudsman and we need to keep strengthening that unit to ensure that it does it work and without fear, favor and interference. Um, maybe uh, Upendula, the question asked by um, Pambugil. I don't know if I understood correctly uh, the issue of the system. I understood her not to mean the system of local government, but the system that is governing the country, meaning that uh, we, we are governing under a neoliberal system. Um, the very system that produced some of the difficulties that we have um, in our own specific uh, um, situation in South Africa, it, it, was, um, it produced the issues of race, gender and class. And the issue of location of people and all of those things, so spatial planning was, was a, a premised on that. And therefore, if we were to change that, there needs to be a change that recognizes that the system did it. Because it's not, if something is systemic and structural, then you need um, changes that go beyond what is in front of you. I'll make an example. Um, in Etseguini, we, we, we have um, built some townships from scratch. There's a township called Waterloo. Um, it's in the north of Deben, towards the airport, mm. the King Shaga airport. Now, the people who are resident in that township were some of the people who were occupying slums and informal settlements around the city. Identified land and those people were moved there. Go to those houses, you'll find that those people are not mm -hmm. there. They've actually gone back because when we found land, land was away from their livelihoods. Their children were going to schools near their informal settlements. They found work around uh, the city centre. Now you move them uh, some kilometres away from that. Now, the reasons for that, if you go to the your human settlement department, they will tell you that the system of the acquisition of land is not based on the issue of recognizing that there's an injustice that was done, people were forcibly removed from the city centers and placed miles away, and therefore you need to recognize that if you are purchasing land for the purposes of. No, it still ran, um, the treasury system says, um, your cheapest coat, and your cheapest land is in the outskirts, and therefore that is the land we are going to get. Mm -hmm. Now, that decision alone perpetuates the apartheid special planning under our own uh, uh, democratic government. And I think that is what uh, Ms. Mpambugil was talking to. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I happen to agree with, with, with Councillor Madlala, especially with regard to the second question. Mm -hmm. And again, I speak from an ad, ad, ad administrator perspective. And I, and I always put that up front so that I don't uh, find myself in a fight when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and that is, you remember, I, I made a uh, uh, reference to competing interests uh, uh, way back in the beginning of, of, of mm. the session. And the, and the status quo, as far as the economy is concerned, is a very, very, very powerful interest. And the state, and, uh, and that's part of the reality of being in government, the state exists to maintain a particular status quo, mostly. Yeah. Mostly. 
You can, as uh, Trevor have said, introduce another angle, like like the president of uh, of Brazil did, and then you can lower the 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 uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, what uh, I, I can't recall exactly, but but that is possible. But what does that take? So it takes absolute uh, a commitment from our leaders, absolute commitment to say that spatial planning. Or no, let 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 me be very clear. Densification. Why do you think it doesn't happen? No matter which government there is. Ne? If, it, if there is not a political world that said there shall be, we will take that, that plot of land in the city center and it will be densified and it will, uh, uh, there will be social housing, there will be this kind of housing, etc., etc., mixed, uh, mi mixed use and, and, and all of that. It is then my job as an administrator to make sure that my zoning scheme, that my land use management system speaks to that. And yes, I know what happens when you start messing with the land use system. There are some very powerful interests that will that will write emails and 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 WhatsApps and so on, <laughs> and to say, "Hey, not in my backyard." We all know that story. So it takes a commitment on both on the side of of our politicians and on the side of the administration because both will be lobbied, and that is really what is needed in order to shift. Uh, in order to change, uh, shift uh, a status quo. And, uh, and, and it doesn't happen often. Let, let me also acknowledge that, that, that fact. One action, if I can start quickly. And I think, can I? One action? Yes, yes just, yeah, just one action. One, okay. Yeah. Are we, how are we doing? We're over... Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. One action. One action. Oh. Can, I, can, I, can I go with the one action quickly? Yes. The one action, uh, uh, again, is um, for me, administrators at all levels, whether you're a city manager, whether you're a supervisor, taking yourself seriously. That, for me, is the one action. What do I mean by that? I mean that uh, as administrators to lead by example, to, to lead ethically and to be uncompromising. Uncompromising, I don't tolerate mediocrity. If something is BS, is BS, and you must change it now. <laughs> I can't take that further. <laughs> Uncompromising, you know uh, uh, what happens when you walk into my office. That's going to happen unless you have done A, B, and C, and have a bloody good reason why you, why you did not do D. Um, also, execute the plan. Execute the plan in a non-partisan manner. Make sure that whatever you do, you do across the board, it is equitable. Uh, uh, it is uh, it is in pursuance of the of this long-term plan that that Trip was talking about. And lastly, uh, 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 colleagues, holding your staff to account. That does not happen uh, for various reasons because we all have small and yana skeletons. We know the story, mm -hmm. but we have to hold everybody in the line accountable. And that is how we take ourselves seriously. Thank you. I think for me, uh, one thing that needs to happen in local government is that there must be performance indicators for politicians. Where you can say, what is it that you do without fail and you are judged and rewarded according to that? It, it shouldn't be an administrative thing. This performance management system cannot end with technocrats. It must actually be the responsibility of political leaders to say, what are we as communities judging you on? What, what is it that you deliver? And if you don't, you must be held accountable. Councilor, thank you. you cover it? Uh, <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> uh, Briefly. In the policy conference, we suggested that uh, the key minimum competencies that are prescribed on, on, on uh, managers should also exist for councillors, so that at least you know that uh, when uh, the city manager presents a report, a financial statement report, at least he knows, he's confident that there's going to be people who are there capable of holding him accountable. It's not just numbers.
and it responds to what needs to be done. But uh, I wanted to say what we need to really change uh, or what we need to put vigor on is partnerships. We need to strengthen partnerships. We need partnerships that empowers um, to ensure that local government comes out uh, a winner out of this battle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I am over time. Uh, but I think uh, just one or two things in closing. Uh, firstly, thanks to the panel for their uh, insights and uh, being open and uh, clear. And, and I think it was a robust discussion. So I think, uh, and unfortunately, we had, um, um, uh, the time that we have was short. But, um, I, and I think in a context where we're saying cities are important, I think earlier on there was information given on, on the significance of cities. So, so it's important that as we're looking at the significance of cities and the role that they need to play in terms of the economy and the country, we need to make sure that we have the right leadership. And uh, you've gone into town in terms of what the right leadership is. I'm not going to go into that. And our problem is not the system. There might be tinkering here, whether you have an executive mayoral system or an exco system tinkering there, but that's already on, in, in, in the system. But I think what was most important for me is the actions that you are proposing, a performance management system to include political um, politicians, issues about the ombudsman, um, uh, issues around um, also make it, I'd like this, and, and I want to close with this, and that administrators themselves also taking themselves seriously and taking pride in the jobs that they do mm -hmm. and making themselves, holding themselves to a standard. But on that note, I think that will help us with governance. And thank you very much to the panel. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much.